Warning, the following content may be distressing or upsetting and not suitable for all audiences. Discretion is advised. On New Year's morning, a devastating sight. A bike crumpled, parts of it strewn across Seaview Road, its light still flashing. I'm not sure if I will ever ride past that site and not think of Byron. I mean, maybe that day will come, but I'm not really sure if that's any time soon. Another cyclist performed CPR on the victim until emergency crews arrived, but he couldn't be saved. I just basically abused him for not watching where he was driving and running into my mate. And then he gave me some excuse about just picking his car up. The Toyota was captured on CCTV moments before the collision, but the video doesn't appear to shed any light on why it ended up on the wrong side of the road. I don't know him, never did. Um, it was just un, uh, an unfortunate set of circumstances that led me to meet him on that day. As to the facts and circumstances, that will come out later once the investigators have had a chance to, to do their job. You won't really know the impact until it affects you and your family, and ultimately it will. Dad was the safest rider I know, so he always wore bright clothing. He would plan his rides based on the direction of the sun so that drivers could see him. You know, when he saw that car coming towards him, he would have done everything he could to avoid it. This is Fatal Five, the story of Byron Gordon. Yeah, so I'm Ian Parra. I'm an Assistant Commissioner with South Australia Police. And part of my portfolio uh, is road safety. So I know Byron uh, as a friend who uh, I've cycled with um, infrequently over the years, but regularly enough to uh, have known him reasonably well. Byron's a GP, he's a really well respected person in, uh, in our community. Um, you know, the majority of the time I got to know Byron was while we were cycling. Uh, and one of the things that always stuck with me was that he would be out at um, ridiculous hours of the morning and often had done you know, a crazy amount of kilometres on the bike before he'd even joined us. So he was really passionate about cycling. Um, and yeah, he was uh, just a, a really nice guy to be around, easy to talk to. So um, my name's Steph. Um, I'm a paramedic with SA Ambulance. Byron is my dad. Um, yeah, he was a pretty good dad, to be honest. Dad worked incredibly hard. Um, so I remember growing up and spending um, lots of time either in hospitals with him um, while he'd drive us to school. Um, but we had a really good relationship. He's probably the member of my family that I'm most alike. Um, we think the same, we look the same, we have the same interests. Um, so growing up, we would always talk about the same things um, and bounce off each other really well. I have so many memories with Dad. Um, the first one that comes to mind is we went away a lot. So we went on lots of family holidays, um, camping and something always went wrong. So I remember going around the country in a leaky tent um, that slept four people and there was five people in our family. So someone always slept in the car. Um, so he was always looking for adventure um, and, you know, doing whatever he could, I guess, to entertain us and um, give us all these family experiences together. My name's Jeff Doe. Um, I was a close personal friend of uh, Dr. Gordon, Byron Gordon. Um, he was my uh, neighbour as well as my GP. Uh, he only lived down the road a short distance. Byron was a really witty and funny guy, you know. He was always willing to help out and uh, used to catch up for dinners, drinks, come over to the shed, look at me, fix my bike, go help him fix this bike. Um, at, when I go to see him in the uh, doctor's surgery, we would chat after, you know, do a consult, and we would spend another five minutes chatting about what I do on the weekend. He also you know, diagnosed me with cancer um, several years ago, quite a few years ago, and through that early diagnosis, I will get my cancer treated early and cancer free now, which is fantastic. And we had a great time in Europe. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. I went on that purpose of riding. Um, we uh, was in uh, the Pyrenees in France, and then we also went to the, the Alps in France. So probably one of the interesting memories we had from that is we went, it was 40 degrees in the Alps, right? And we got back one day after a ride in the middle of the day and Byron jumped in the pool with just his bibs on. So you know what cycling bibs look like? Just his bibs on. So it was hilarious when I look at that. So uh, my name is Mandy. Um, I live in the western suburbs of Adelaide um, and I am a paediatric registered nurse. I was working New Year's Eve 
and um, I was supposed to be driving down to Victor Harbour to spend New Year's Eve with a very good friend of mine down there. I um, had a really busy day at work, I was tired. Um, I'd heard that there was fireworks at Victor when they weren't, because of COVID, there weren't any in Adelaide and it's like everybody was heading down there. So I made the decision not to drive down to Victor Harbour that evening. I don't like driving that road at the best of times. Um, so I had got up early on New Year's Day. Um, I had taken the dog for a walk. Um, and just after seven, I messaged Marie, said I was on my way. Um, and I left my house to head down to Victor Harbour. My name's Sean Patton. I'm a sergeant at uh, Road Policing Section North. My team was on a day shift, 1st of uh, January. We'd started doing um, an early uh, RBT on, uh, in North Adelaide. So we started at three in the morning. So we were on from three till about six, 6.30, just doing um, random corporate drink driving, if we will, for, for, for New Year's Day. My wife and, and, and myself, and we caught up Byron and his wife, Wendy, on New Year's Eve. And we chatted over that. Neither Byron and I drank that night, but we decided to get up in the morning and go for an early morning ride before it got warm. So we met about six o'clock outside of our place, and we rode to Outer Harbour and back. It's a nice, easy ride. It's 60 k's. It's around about a two hour ride. The weather conditions were perfect. It wasn't windy, wasn't, wasn't hot, wasn't cold, actually was warm. Um, so it was really good visibility that time of year at six o'clock. So yeah, it was a nice ride out there. Once we got at the end, we stopped for a short while, then rode back. And yeah, it was perfect conditions. You know? So there was no reason for anybody not to see us. Yeah, so that was really quick. The car coming towards us crossed over the side of the road, side of the road really quickly. It wasn't, wasn't weaving ahead. I didn't notice it weaving ahead at all. It just, as it got close to us, it, it crossed the road really quickly. Missed me by a small distance, but enough. Uh, I yelled at the driver at the time, and it, I could heard, heard the uh, crash behind me. And then I stopped, turned around and went back to Byron. Um, Byron was lying uh, on the ground, face up on the footpath. The driver was already out of his car at the stage. I uh, yelled at him for not watching where he was driving because he looked as though he was looking at his phone. And so he was, looking, he was not looking where he was driving, he was looking down. Uh, and then he gave me some excuse back, which made no sense to me all the time. Um, and then I just attended to Byron. I didn't talk to the guy at all after that. I just focused on Byron and began gave him CPR after looking for his vital signs. I, I call this my sliding doors moment. When I travel along uh, military roads, you come to a roundabout and you can turn down Grange Road or you can turn up onto Seaview Road. And different days I go different directions. And for whatever reason that morning, I turned up to go onto Seaview Road. I turned on, I turned at the roundabout and then I turned um, left onto Seaview Road and I'm travelling along. There was no traffic, there was nothing really around and then to my surprise there was a car wedged into a stoby pole. At 7.30 uh, I was holding the police station just doing some administrative duties when a call came over the radio saying that a vehicle had collided with uh, a cyclist. Police go to Astra. 224 Hello. Police emergency, Hello. what is your location? It had been a car accident on Adelaide Park, there's a stolen car and he's also hit a van on a, on a bike. Okay, what's the location yeah. please? What's the location? What's the location, sir? 379 Esplanade. Is anyone injured? Yeah, I mean, it's been hit by a, by a car on a bike. Okay, what are, um, what are the injuries? His leg, is, his leg is completely sideways. And there's a stoby post hanging on the uh, angle and there's liquids pouring out of the car. Okay, I'm gonna get there as soon as possible. Okay. okay. Don't hang up, don't, don't hang up. Don't, I won't hang up, I won't hang up. Oh, okay. So the cyclist's not breathing? He, he's not breathing. There was no emergency services there at that time, so I pulled over and walked back to see if I could be of any help at the scene of the accident. I didn't expect to see somebody on the pavement, um, a cyclist on the pavement and another cyclist for performing CPR. And I just went into automatic 
So I offered to take over chest compressions because I didn't know how long they'd been going. But the other, the other cyclist that was doing the chest compressions wasn't going to stop. Traffic 624. So the information was coming through very quickly. Uh, the information that I received shortly after the fact that was a cyclist, a male cyclist, um, was currently under CPR on Seaview Road and that on, uh, bystanders were actually facilitating the CPR. The, the cyclist that I now know, his name's Byron, um, he, I think, to be honest, he was probably already passed. His colour was not good. His eyes were open. So I just went into automatic. It's like, well, if you've got any chance, I need to get, do mouth to mouth. Um, obviously, there's no equipment around, so you have that split second decision to make as to whether you're going to do mouth to mouth or not. Um, it was very hard to get a clear airway to give him mouth to mouth, and unfortunately, his airway was full of blood, so I just was covered in blood from that. So I just cleared it off. I think I did about three rounds of trying to give him mouth to mouth. So when I arrived there, I saw a vehicle that had collided with a tree and a stoby pole, and then I saw the remnants of a, of a carbon fibre racing bike that was just crumpled. And then as all my attention was drawn to um, the paramedics, I saw a male who was currently under CPR and he was not responsive. I remember hearing from my sister and she said, Dad's been in an accident, it's bad, it's really bad, he's under CPR. Um, so I knew at that moment that he wasn't going to survive. The reports from the witnesses was that the driver got out of the car and his demeanour was very aggressive. He was aggressive towards the, the cyclists. He was aggressive that his car was damaged. He was the reason for the crash. I mean, obviously I was working with Byron, so I actually didn't even know where he was. Um, but one of the other young ladies I asked and she said, no, nope, he walked away. He walked and he was sitting down an alley. Um, apparently he had actually tried to drive away at one point, but he just got out of the car completely unscathed. And it's like, I have no idea. I have no idea how that happened. Yeah, I would have assist um, with this uh, 201 rear death message. See, surname name is Gordon, Golf, Oscar, Romeo, Delta, Oscar, November. First name, Byron, brother, Yankee, Romeo, Oscar, November. So on the day, we had um, safe old officers come to our house to confirm that Dad was dead. Um, they're actually officers that I now work with and see all the time. From there, my mum and dad's friend had to give statements. Um, so that happened a couple of days later. It was obviously New Year's Day, there were lots of public holidays, so things were dragged out as a result. Um, we had to identify his body. It was during COVID time, so we were restricted with trying to plan a funeral um, for someone who had an unexpected death. Um, and I think there are approximately 150 people who wanted to attend this funeral. And so we had them lining up outside Centennial, um, trying to get in and then just watching on big screen TVs. So that entire process was quite challenging. Um, from memory, approximately six weeks after Dad was killed um, was the first court appearance. These deaths are hugely traumatic. Um, I can solely blame someone else for the death of my father. Um, and I don't think I'll ever get over that. And that's just because of one decision that they made. So with court, um, the court was like adjourned so many times. It's extremely frustrating. Like uh, the accused kept on deferring for whatever reason. It was a change of lawyer, it was another change of lawyer, it was something this. Then he put in, he put in um, a not guilty plea and just dragged it out. And that was really excruciating for myself and, and his family. It kept on just dragged the whole episode out. The driver pleaded guilty in the last instant. So his last option, I think, was at uh, either district court to plead guilty. We didn't, uh, didn't think of any evidence, but I did provide a witness statement and a witness impact statement, as did his family. So yeah, and I went to court. Uh, he offered an apology. Um, I wasn't really interested. You know, he dragged out the court. If he was seriously uh, sympathetic and sorry, he would have went to court the first instant and dealt with it there and then. 
he just, I just felt as though he just prolonged it for no reason. Through the whole process and the investigation, the driver had his bloods taken, which is part of our investigation and our requirements when investigating these type of incidents. The toxology reports came back that the driver in his system had um, methamphetamines, cannabis, prescription medication, and, uh, can, um, and ecstasy, so MDMA. That cocktail of drugs leads into the fatal five of drink and drug driving and distraction driving, and clearly, his impairment while driving that day, he shouldn't have been on the road. And unfortunately, we can't bring back the deceased. And this is the reason why, because of uh, the cocktail of drugs he had in his system. The driver, currently imprisoned, he was um, served a imprisonment sentence of five years and six months. And when he's released, he will have his driver's license disqualified for 15 years. I mean, I know um, that Byron will be remembered by uh, family and friends as a, as a loving guy, um, a good laugh, um, did crazy amount of Ks on the bike, but he clearly loved it, he was clearly passionate about it. What I'd like people to think about is that those consequences I've spoken about before, the things you don't realise about what's going to happen when someone loses their life. It's not just at the accident scene, this is uh, an ongoing thing. I'm not sure if I will ever ride past that site and not think of Byron. I mean, maybe that day will come, but I'm not really sure if that's any time soon. Wendy and the family uh, and Jeff will never forget um, Byron. That New Year's Day is forever tainted for them, you know, as it is for the group as we ride with him, because we will, you know, associate that day every year with losing Byron. And that's a tough gig. If I could just implore people, look, there are, sure there are bad people, but there are lots of good people out there who make really bad choices for very stupid reasons sometimes. And that's when you can find yourself in the situation that Byron's family is, or that's when you can find you and your family in the situation that the offending driver is in. And that's what I want people to walk away with and understanding that this can happen to you. Oh, I've gone through everything. I've been angry. I have been sad. I, I'm sad for Byron and his family and all his friends. I'm sad for the family of the driver because they've had to live through this. They haven't lost, well, they have. You know, they've, they've been disturbed by this. So many people have been touched by this one incident, all for the fact that somebody had a good night the night before. It's ruined so many people's lives. I still, we're, well, we're coming up to close to two years, or we two years this January. I still have flashbacks. I still am very cautious when I'm out. I, I hate the fact that my Grown-up children both still cycle, but I can't stop that from happening. The sound of a car hitting its brakes at any time sends me off as well. So yeah, there's no good has come out of this. I'd like his family to know that I tried. I did really try. Fatal Five, the story of Byron Gordon. <laughs>